Good evening, Your Excellencies. We are students from the International Relations Department from Bina Nusantara University. We'll make a presentation about Grab Company related to the Multinational Corporations Global Strategy and Social Responsibility course under the supervision of our lecturer, Mas Rosino Aji Afandi. We are Group 8 consisting of myself, Dixon Avenus, Felix Patrick, Rukvia Matcha, and Fanya Wilhelmina. This presentation will explain the motive for the expansion of Grab Company, which is linked with several concepts that have been explained, namely five porters, value chain, business model canvas, and diamond theory. At the end of the presentation, it will be explained whether it is beneficial for Grab to expand to other areas or not. Before we do the presentation, we would like to explain some of the conditions which are data provided today is based on Group 8's personal analysis that is intended to simulate a business expansion proposal required for verbal test and final exam in the multinational corporations, global strategy, and social responsibilities. Please do not use this data and analysis for any investment or financial decisions. Please do your own analysis and risk assessment. This video doesn't represent Grab or any other corporate entities. It is intended to be strictly educational. As an introduction, Grab is a technology company that provides delivery services via a mobile application. The company was founded in 2012 in Malaysia. Now, it has operated in more than eight countries and 225 cities, and it has been used by more than 100 million users. In short, Grab provides delivery services from Grab by Grab Car, Grab Taxis, and Grab Hitch. In addition, we also added several services such as Grab Express and Grab Food. There are also financial services where Grab collaborates with OVO to become a payment system. Some of the progress that Grab has made is becoming the largest startup in Asia, acquiring Uber APAC, helping communities in Southeast Asia, and operating in eight countries such as Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Myanmar. So here's this, here is the brief structure of PT Grab Technology Indonesia, which is the corporate entity that operates Grab in Indonesia, which is the main platform for our Grab for Grab core services, such as Grab Car, Grab Bike, Grab Fresh, Grab for Business, Grab Health, Grab Food, Grab Gift, and Grab Taxi. Beyond that, there is also PT Kudo Technology Indonesia, which was acquired by Grab in 2017 and operates also in Indonesia. And also uh, PT Bumi Cakrawala per Perkasa, which was partly owned by Grab Indonesia, that own OVO, which is the financial services used by Grab. Beyond that, there is also subsidiaries and affiliated companies that are essential for Grab operations, particularly to the core services where each of the subsidiaries focus and support Grab in relation to the core services mentioned above. Next slide. So before we start, we should understand why uh, we should expand because in our headquarters in Singapore, uh, basically, we have dominated the Singaporean market with a clear competitive advantage as the only ride hailing services holding CSO license in Singapore and having the biggest fleet of vehicles by a wide margin. We dominated e-hauling services and replaced taxi operators and became the biggest and the most dominant market player in Singapore. However, despite our domination, uh, it is a fact that Singapore is a small country with a robust and affordable public transportation as such there is only so limited room for growth as such we all need to look beyond singapore and look elsewhere for room for growth and today we're going to explain why we choose indonesia as our expansion country on june 2014 indonesia became the sixth country for grab it now has become an essential an integral part of Grab. Next, please. And why Indonesia? First, Indonesia is an aspiring middle class with a vibrant economy. The middle class is a major driver for economic growth and now represent close to half of all household consumption in Indonesia. Second, the digital is the future. Indonesia has 202 million internet users who contributed around $70 billion to the country's digital economy. And last, the possible regional technology powerhouse, Indonesia has over 2,300 tech startups, including 12 with the unicorn status, a startup valued at over $1 billion. Next, please. And regarding the government regulation, first, revision on law number 22 of 2009 on traffic and land transportation 
related to right hauling regulation. Second, Minister of Transportation Decree Number 348 of 2019 related to regulation of minimum and maximum tariff for right hauling services. And the last, Presidential Regulation Number 55 of 2019 concerning acceleration of the battery-based electric vehicle program for road transportation related to grab launching of grab car electric power by Hyundai in Indonesia. Next, please. And now Gojek, the hometown hero, our competitor, founded in 2010. Gojek was founded with just 20 drivers and a single tiny call center with the goal to reduce frictions in people's life. Founded by Nadim, Nadim Makarim, now Minister of Education. It has changed life of millions and shape how Indonesia live their lives, contributing 1% of Indonesia's GDP. Now we're going to explain the value chain of primary activity. First, the inbound logistics. On October 2019, Grab had 5 million partners from all around cities in Indonesia. The service consists of Grab Bike, Grab Car, and Grab Food. The same could also be seen with Gojek as they had 2 million partners from all around Indonesia. Thus, we can conclude that the competitive advantage falls on Grab as our company had more partners than Gojek. With more partners, it's easier to customer to get service or driver when using our services. Please next, service for Grab. Grab Indonesia use loyalty system for users which also known as Grab Rewards. It also used to appreciate users loyalty to Grab. There are three levels in Grab Rewards which consists of silver, gold, and platinum. There are also a variety of rewards such as discount for any or even outside the Grab service like Agoda, Booking.com, and special price for launch at the airport. Next. While with Gojek, Gojek also have their own loyalty system, almost the same with Grab, which is also known as the Go Club. They are known as Boss, Juragan, and Anak Sultan. The rewards can be a discount for any Gojek services, Cashback for 100% with corporate companies such as Alphamart, McDonald's, Google Play, and Hockpin. Based on our perspective, loyalty system from Grab help competitive advantage than Gojek. Please next. Now the outbound. The outbound logistic, Grab Indonesia provides their application in many platforms. In smartphone, Grab's application can be found in Android Operation System and iOS. Gojek also provides their application in the same platform and operation system. In our research, we can see that the difference between Grab and Gojek reviews in both platform, Android, and iOS. For our conclusion, Grab had more competitive advantage as it has the highest rate and more reviews in both platforms. But Gojek also holds the competitive advantage in travel as Gojek plays as the first choice for travel services and grab in food and beverage services. And now for the operation, based on the number of partners from both companies, both companies utilize the system of online application to sustain and support their partners. Through online application, both Gojek and Grab manage to provide many services to deliver packaged food and attachera. Other than that, based on our research, Gojek system received more complaint because of system error and the long wait for their service. In these aspects, Grab also had more competitive advantage than Gojek. And the last marketing and sales. Grab also developed their marketing almost in all platforms, especially in social media. The media itself consists of billboard, videotron, and participate as a stand in many events. Social media and advertisement in websites also have been conducted. The use of promo also given to the customer who gain, who gain their interest. The information regarding any promos were being extended to the customer through advertisement and the system of loyalty. Gojek also have the same idea as Grab to market their brand. All right, moving on to supporting activities. 
uh, talking about firm infrastructure, our company has currently 71 branch offices spread across various areas of Indonesia, while Gojek only has 45 branch offices. With more existing branch offices and this advantage on our side, this will have an impact on the potential for recruiting new partners, which will certainly increase revenue and profitable for Grab. Talking about technology development, Grab already has research centers and tech centers that have been built in several countries, including Indonesia. This building was built as an innovation center for Southeast Asia region. Located in South Jakarta, this building focuses on developing various technology solutions for Southeast Asia's micro, small, and medium enterprises. This tech center also will be connected with other branch phase offices with in an effort to develop the quality of our services. Meanwhile, Gojek only has one R&D center in Jakarta. This shows that Grab is superior to Gojek and it can be concluded there's competitive advantage for Grab. Procurement. At this time, we only just acquired OVO and Uber to improve the quality. We Grab plan uh, to increase the number of companies that will be acquired. However, Gojek currently has 30 subsidiaries that have been acquired. Here, it appears that Gojek has advantages over our company, Grab. Competitive advantage is in Gojek. Talking about human resources section, in terms of overall score rating, we have more value in terms of reviews and star ratings. We are quite promising in the potential for financial security compared to Gojek. However, in this slide, we can see that Gojek has a wider range of services that are useful for the convenience of its workers. So it can be said that competing companies company are still superior in this field. Now uh, for the value delivery, next. In customer segments, mass market with demographic target segmentation are both uh, companies customer segmentation. It suggested that Grab focus on graphic services to focus on large urban product for groups with limited time for cooking. This means that Grab rewards plans more loyal to the workers in urban area, which people are going to use it frequently. On the other hand, yeah, Gojek is the same. Next. In the customer relationship, uh, promos are given to the first Grab user to acquire new customers. Grab and Gojek have done well in this aspect, but from users say that Gojek that might be better in customer retention, is carried out through regular promotion and also the value proposition that has been given to customer. So as long as valuable, value is provided and is also considered valuable and is valuable for customer. Key takeaways in this aspect, who has more the capital to expedite will prevail. In this case, Grab will be seen from the market share and sales per customer, which is my higher than Gojek. Next. Channels for Grab are through an application where you use where the user use application refuse to input for improvement for the Grab application as well as rewards from the related program. With all this aspect, it turns out that Gojek and Grab also provided the same channel segmentation to each customer. However, the aspect that distinguishes these two companies on the inside is how effective their capacity is, is utilizing the channel to reach a larger, larger customer base. But Gojek has the ability to take advantage of its e-commerce to reach many customers because it's already emerged with Tokopedia. So in our opinion, this software PDA user definitely use Gojek more than Grab. Next. Uh, next. Key resources. So Grab has around 71 Grab offices throughout throughout Indonesia in 68 cities with 5 million partners or drivers. Our Gojek, around 36 Gojek offices spread throughout Indonesia in 36 cities with uh, 2 million partners or drivers. But these external support companies uh, that are shown here are needed for our company for company to be able to expand and multiply for the services such as in Grab Indonesia, they have OVO for payment and Gojek like Clodoc for their health services. Next. These are the key stakeholders of Grab and Gojek, which is are the investor, for example, in transportation such as Toyota Motor Corporation in Grab and Astra International in Gojek. Next. Next. So the value, for the value proposition of the triple bottom line, we can see that actually Grab and Gojek kind of offer a similar proposition, but we can we believe that Grab actually provide a much more environmentally friendly and more planet planet safe approach because a Grab use a top to bottom approach, which is much more effective and it is much more efficient because a Grab try to do by example, leading by example, and also inviting people through incentive that is actually truly uh, useful and create a positive feedback loop. 
for instance, Grab try to ensure that all of their buildings, all of their vehicles are environmentally friendly and, and they try to use renewable energy and also use uh, electric vehicles in their vehicle fleet. And also they actually invite their partners to join to the programs and provide incentive. So the partners are eager to join. And also this will also invite uh, uh, environmental conscious customers to also join in the initiative. Meanwhile, Gojek use a bottom to top approach which, rely, which relies on customer to, to do the programs because Gojek plan, Gojek's program rely on people that are environmentally conscious to use the, to use Gojek to, to pull plastic, plastic waste through their services and, and put them in recycling facilities, which is simply in, ineffective because there's no incentive being given. And this can be somewhat seen as greenwashing. But of course, there are some questions about that. And another problem that Gojek faces that Gojek has yet to adopt electric vehicle in their vehicle fleet, while Grab has already uh, starting to adopt and have increased their pledge to environmental sustainability. In this case, we can argue that Grab provides a much more compelling and much more environmentally safe uh, proposition. Next. In terms of people, um, Grab and Gojek basically do the same thing because they increase employment and reduce unemployment, uh, increase financial literacy through financial technology such as OVO, Grab, and through the use of application, it certainly increased the productivity of the individual workers in Indonesia. However, Gojek being an Indonesian-based company listed in the Indonesian Stock Exchange has a clear advantage being, an, being a product, being a homegrown product. There's, of course, some aspect of nationalism in play. And of course, a key thing that we should note is because as Gojek listed, uh, is listed in Indonesian Stock Exchange, they actually provide another financial incentive for the Indonesian people. That is through the welfare support and also the stock options through the Saham Gotong Royong where Gojek give free stocks for the partners and for the customers to be part of Gojek's growth and future development. So in this case, we can argue that Gojek has an advantage because it is being supported by Indonesian people as an Indonesian company. Next slide, please. So uh, in terms of profitability here, we can see actually Grab and Gojek actually provide similar services and provide similar profitability for the people. However, Gojek being an Indonesian company contribute 1% of GDP while Grab only contributes to 0.7% of Indonesia's GDP. However, in the grand scheme of things, anybody who joined Grab or Gojek enjoyed a significant boost in their income, a significant boost in their welfare and, in, and in quality of life. Gojek and Grab also provides the same incentive to Gojek Ventures and Gojek, uh, Gojek Ventures and Grab Ventures to increase and accelerate uh, small medium enterprises in Indonesia. But then again, as I said in the previously, being a homegrown country, being a homegrown company, provides a huge financial advantage for Gojek, which increases the profitability and support from the people. Next slide. Uh, let's talk about financial analysis. Uh, uh, a thing that we should keep in mind that is Grab has much more capital than Gojek by a huge margin. Grab is listed in, in the United States at the biggest stock exchange in the world while Gojek is listed in Indonesia. This allows Grab to gain more capital and this capital allows Grab to create more promotion, to create more aggressive promote uh, marketing strategy to increase their market share and increase their profitability. This is something that Gojek may not have. This is can be seen in the revenue where Grab actually have much higher revenue compared to Gojek at 240 trillion vis-a-vis -vis to 225 trillion in GM fee. But in net revenue, we can see that Grab have a much higher net revenue at 9.6 compared to Gojek at 7 trillion. This is interesting because Gojek has more customers, but the customers is actually spending less compared to Grab. This goes to show that despite having less customer, Grab managed to monetize their product because Grab product is actually much more competitive and much more compelling to the customers. Next slide, please. Another interesting aspect is because Grab actually spend on money where it matters. They spend on consumer promo and research and development, as Dixon has mentioned. This is does not apply. This does not apply with Gojek because Gojek, as part of Goto, have many subsidiaries and. They actually have a lot of companies that they that they acquired, but has 
yet to be profitable. That's why it become a huge burden, as we can see, in the sales and marketing, depreciation and amortization. This actually reflects the grand, uh, the, the, the grand strategy applied by both companies where Grab employs a multi-domestic strategy that caters to the need of the of the consumers, while Gojek employs a transnational strategy that requires them to have all control of the products at the expense of higher financial risk, which Grab did not face. Next slide, please. This reflects in the net revenue streams because a multi-domestic strategy allows Grab to be more, uh, more, more effective in providing the needs required by the people. That's why all of sectors, all of the core services in Grab is profitable. This does not apply in Gojek because Gojek part part of Gojek business is, is profitable, namely Gojek services like uh, GoCar, GoRide, and and, and etc. However, the other aspects of Gojek uh, Gojek business like Tokopedia, Goto Financial, like GoPay is not profitable. This is a huge burden for Gojek, and it has shown that Grab philosophy of multi-domestic strategy of focusing on limiting financial risk at the expense of control have been working and could generate even more revenue thanks to our huge capital. Next slide. All right, moving on to quarter five process analysis. Grab company has entered Indonesia in 2014 and is currently the number two best company in becoming a driving service provider in Indonesia. The first biggest one for now is Gojek. However, it can be said also that on a regular basis, Grab develops faster. In Indonesia itself, there are several competitors who are engaged in the same field and are trying to create their own currency system. You know, like Grab Ovo, Gojek GoPay, Traveloka with Sakuku, and Shopee with Shopee Pay. Speaking of capital funding aspect, our company Grab has raised about $15.5 billion in 35 investment rounds. Gojek is quite far behind with the nominal value of around 6.6 .6 billion with 13 rounds of investment. And even though we have fewer, fewer users, in general, we can still compete well with Gojek. This is data from the side of our suppliers, namely food service providers. And in general terms, we excel in all aspects of choice compared to competitor. Regarding the people aspect, our company has also had a significant impact on society compared to Gojek and other competitors. For the threat of new entrants, when compared, Grab and Gojek have almost the same mechanism, so the analysis will be incomplete. But now there is a new competitor called InDriver. InDriver itself is a competitor who comes from Russia and has expanded to several other countries. What's interesting about InDriver is that it offers a real-time deals mechanism, where this mechanism allows users to bid on price for delivery services. Neither our company nor Gojek has met any policies or adjustments to this mechanism. Now, consumer wants something efficient and most affordable option, like new ailing competitors such as Maxim and food delivery services such as Tefloka Eats and Shopee Food. Uh, companies provide cheaper services because new companies tend to spend their funds, burn money to get base for customers to use their services. Although these new companies way of increasing its user base, Grab can still lead to bargaining power of customers in Indonesia. This is because Grab, as one of the oldest e-hailing services companies in Indonesia, makes people still loyal to using Grab. Not only that, Grab still burning funds to get more customers to com compete with the oldest companies like Gojek by providing cheaper uh, e-hailing and lots of promos and sales premium packages. Next. So far, online transportation such as Grab is very popular and convenient for customers because it helps them do their work and daily activities. Grab really provides effectiveness and efficiency for customers as they provide various services such as Grab bike or car rides, packages, and fruit delivery. Thus, online transportation is facing many threats nowadays regarding any substitutes to replace it with a better offer. Next. So bargaining power suppliers, according to Minister Regulation Number 12 of 2019 concerning the protection of the safety of motorcycle users used for the inter interest of the community. This law is designed to protect transport partners OJOL in terms of safety, partnership, suspension, and wages. And from the, uh, on, uh, the Online Drivers Association plans to push more and more regulatory changes in the interest of drivers. Okay, next. So in, our, in conclusion, based on our analysis, we found that uh, Grab has a, has a clear competitive advantage in the primary activities of the value chain. While in the next slide, as we can see, 
uh, Grab Grab has some advantage, particular in the firm infrastructure and technology development, where Grab has invested heavily in such sector. However, Grab still falls short in human resources and procurement. However, we believe that in terms of human human resources, this can be easily uh, met. We can easily balance this out. However, in terms of procurement, this is still a huge uh, a huge problem for us. But at the moment, actually. Gojek, despite having some advantage, is still struggling. So I think in this case, it, it somewhat balanced things out. Next slide, please. So uh, something that, that we need to note is that uh, in terms of procurement, yes, Gojek have financial services and digital infrastructure that is so robust could, that it could provide uh, an in, many indirect benefits in the future. And also uh, at the moment, it provides more services in for their partners and for their human resources. And yes, we still have an uh, respond to in drivers uh, new mechanism but i believe this is not a huge problem because we already established a huge market base next slide in conclusion grab has a clear and very convincing competitive advantage based on the models and the and the analytical tools we have used while grab still need to consider the problems and particularly with the things that they still fall short in such as procurement human resources and the threats of in driver at the moment uh, I think there's a there's a lot of avenue for improvement as Gojek financial advantage has yet to pose a challenge as they're still struggling with the early investment that has yet to produce any returns. As such, we advise Grab to look into strategy to increase its competitiveness, particularly in the financial sector, which has become much more competitive recently in Indonesia. This can be achieved through acquisition or merger with any other existing services. With this result of analysis, we believe that Grab should and is able to expand in other areas. And we believe that this expansion is justified and adjusted through the motive of market seeking for the benefits for our company profitability and also providing the value proposition through employment benefits for the people in, of Indonesia and its economy. This is our uh, next slide, please. These are our references, and you just can check it on your own. Um, but uh, thank you for attending our explanation, and see you at the next occasion. Bye bye. <laughs>